Well, welcome everyone. We appreciate your time today. We know you're all busy, but we wanted to take a few minutes uh, out of your day to introduce you to Michael Rosbrook. Michael is the founder of Ros Strategies, and today he's going to introduce us to a new opportunity, especially for bankruptcy attorneys, but it's an effect, it's effective strategies for adding tax resolution to your bankruptcy or law practice. This was especially interesting to me because I know it's always you know, interesting and difficult to find new ways to add revenue to your law practice. But Michael has a very unique approach to it and it's very interesting and very effective. So I am going to uh, you know, wrap up my presentations and turn this over to Michael and let him tell you uh, about this, more about himself and more about how he does this. Um, but if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A. And if it's appropriate, I'll introduce, I'll, uh, introduce your question to Michael and he will answer and or we will wait towards the end to, uh, to answer your question. So please feel free again to ask him in the chat or the Q&A. But um, for now, I'm gonna turn this over to Michael. Michael, take it away. Thank you so much, Travis. Uh, appreciate you having me on and uh, looking forward to giving uh, the folks on the call some great value here. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's begin with, well, number one is, let me just qualify myself. So I'm a CPA, I'm also a certified tax resolution specialist. And for 16 years, I represented uh, hundreds, my firm represented thousands of clients before the IRS. So what is tax resolution? Tax resolution is basically somebody who owes the IRS, can't take out their checkbook, write a check in full and pay the IRS off. So that's it in a nutshell, but we'll get into a lot more detail as we go through the presentation here. So on today's webinar, we're gonna cover a couple of things. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the opportunity, the market opportunity that exists today for tax resolution practitioners. We're also gonna talk about the six benefits of adding IRS representation or tax controversy to your practice. And we're gonna talk about what the four choices that most taxpayers are faced with when they owe the IRS. And we're gonna talk about the five most common debt settlement programs that the IRS offers your clients. And we're gonna go through a case study and I'll show you an example of a typical tax resolution case. So with that said, let's look at the market. So first, smart entrepreneurs always look at the size of a market before jumping in and offering a product or a service. So in the tax resolution world, there are right now 19 million people that owe the IRS $391 billion. 14 million of them are already in the IRS's crosshairs. They are already in the IRS's collection division, meaning they're getting nasty grams every day of the week and the IRS is aggressively going after them trying to enforce collection. And the industry taken as a whole is a $6.7 billion industry. You don't need a lot of market share. As a matter of fact, you need a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of a percent to make an extra hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year in your practice. And since 2005, the number of people going into the IRS's collection division has increased exponentially. Uh, right now, or actually in 2017, fiscal year 2017, the 2018 stats are probably coming out in a couple of weeks. But in 2017, the IRS levied 590,000 taxpayers. Levies mean where they actually garnish your client's paycheck or they go into their bank account and drain their bank account. The IRS issued 446,000 liens. Liens are very different than levies. Liens is just notice to the world that the IRS has first dibs on your client's assets and property that they own right now and will acquire in the future. And the IRS also seized 323 personal residences in 2017, generally with the help of the FBI and the DEA. Most of those are uh, drug enforcement cases. In 2017, the IRS took their penalty club and took that club and hit uh, taxpayers over the head with it to the tune of $26.5 billion in penalties. However, the people who got representation, who hired tax uh, resolution professionals, had half of that abated. So it's very, uh, there's, a, there's a format on how to get these penalties abated, and the IRS abates penalties every day of the week to the tune of nearly $13 billion in 2017. In 2017, the IRS entertained 
62,000 offers in compromise. Offers in compromise is what, uh, is what bankruptcy is to unsecured debt, is what an offer in compromise is to tax debt. We'll get into that a little more later on. The IRS accepted 25,000 of those 62,000 submissions, which means that there was a 40% acceptance rate. That's the second highest acceptance rate since 1998 because the IRS under their new fresh start initiative has made it easier for taxpayers to qualify for the offering compromise program. The other thing I want to mention is, is I've been in this business about 20 years and I've seen the pendulum swing back and forth to enforced aggressive collection uh, to where the IRS was basically sitting on their laurels and not doing anything. Uh, in the last few years, the IRS really wasn't enforcing as much of the law as they could due to budget cuts, uh, deficits, uh, losing about 23% of their headcount. With the appointment of Charles Reddick, the new IRS commissioner, who I personally know, we actually manned a phone bank in LA about 18 years ago, uh, taking uh, callers' uh, questions. Uh, he's a Trump appointee, uh, but his first week in office, he hired 250 criminal investigation guys. So the pendulum is going to swing back, in my opinion, uh, to enforce collection here in the next few years. Um, plus, you have the cannabis industry that's exploding and also the crypto tax currency market that's exploding. When I mean exploding, they're ripe for potential tax resolution clients. A lot of people don't report their crypto uh, currency transaction gains on their returns. And cannabis, 33 states now in the union have uh, legalized marijuana. However, the federal government has not. So uh, the federal government doesn't allow any deductions on a return other than cost of goods sold, thereby um, generating huge net incomes and huge tax liabilities on that. So the, the, the pendulum has swung back to enforce collection. So less than few, fewer than 4,000 firms actually provide help to this fast growing client base. Yeah, it's amazing that only 4,000 firms or practitioners actually do this for a living day in and day out, helping people with tax problems. And just one new client, which I'm going to demonstrate, is worth at least $5,000 to $8,500 and more to you. Each case is worth at least $5,000. The average fee for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy case nationwide it's about $1,500 to $2,000, and I just mentioned the average case fee for resolution is $5,000. 7.5 million people every year do not file their income tax returns. As a matter of fact, 50% of your tax resolution clients are going to be non-filers to begin with, and the average non-filer has between four to seven years of unfiled returns. The IRS spends the majority of their budget, 40% of their budget on enforcement every year. And as I mentioned earlier, $391 billion is owed to the IRS every year due to non-filers, people who underpay their taxes, and people who cheat. Underreporting is just a fancy name for cheating, especially independent contractors who don't get 1099s and deal mostly in the cash economy. So. Uh, I mean, you can answer this question yourself. Isn't it true that there's a big opportunity right now that's staring you in the face, bringing tax resolution into your practice? So let's talk about the benefits of adding tax resolution. So as an attorney, you're automatically uniquely qualified to take advantage of this because you're only one of three credentialed people on the planet who can fully represent clients before the IRS. An attorney, a certified public accountant, and an enrolled agent. And tax resolutions happens to be the hottest area in the tax space today. And the world's top business experts advise that working in a niche is the only way to really achieve financial independence. And tax controversy is an excellent way to do that, building on the skills and the credential that you already possess. And as I mentioned, the average fee for a Chapter 7 BK case is about $1,500 to $2,000 nationwide. Now, you may be charging slightly more than that. However, the average minimum fee for a tax resolution case is $5,000.
resolving tax problems can easily double to triple your current hourly rates as this practice area lends itself beautifully to value pricing or flat fee pricing. Also, doing tax resolution, you never have to leave the office. If you're doing bankruptcy, you always are going to the 341A creditor hearing at court. Doing tax resolution, 99.9% .9 of the time, you never have to leave the office. Everything can be done from your office via phone, fax, and the mails. The other thing is, is look, if your team, if you or your team are spending time chasing after fees, when you really should be working on earning new fees, you may think that, or, you, or tax resolution might be just the thing that the doctor ordered. Because uh, in, in, in my experience, in 16 years, I never sent out one invoice. And I'll show you that in a, a little later. All of my billing was done on value pricing, flat fee billing. And as a matter of fact, I had deferred revenue on my books versus accounts receivable. Deferred revenue is simply having money in the bank, deposits in the bank for work that hasn't yet been performed. How nice is that having deferred revenue than having accounts receivable that you're chasing after making those dreaded monthly collection calls that we all love to do. The other thing is, is number five, a majority of this work can be performed by paralegals and admins. This frees up your time to spend on generating leads and talking to qualified prospects, and you can further leverage your time by getting tax resolution case management software, which I'll talk about a little later. Competition. Marketing to a niche market eliminates competition. In fact, former competitors become valued referral sources. Additionally, being in the powerful position of being able to offer troubled taxpayers the much, re much needed relief will be known throughout your community. Being recognized as the practitioner specializing in tax problem resolution will bring referrals from people and other professionals you've never even met before. You'll be known as the go-to person for tax problem resolution. So again, I just wanna briefly go through some of the advantages again. Your bread and butter cases are between five to $10,000 in fees, and I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. These fees are paid in advance prior to the case settling. Courts have no jurisdiction on your tax resolution fees. Also, you probably are asking yourselves right now, if you're attorneys, how am I gonna do these tax returns? You just said, Michael, that half of the clients are non-filers and that they have three to seven years of unfiled returns. All the returns, all the prep can be outsourced. I'm a CPA, I never prepared one return in my practice, I outsourced all of my tax preparation. Two new clients a month are worth $120,000 to $240,000 to you annually. That's just two clients a month. You don't have to leave the office to go to the 341A creditor court hearings. Most of the work can be performed uh, by paralegals and admins. And here's the thing. It's a small leap, technically, for an attorney to do this work, especially a bankruptcy attorney, because you are already familiar with how the IRS works and you're using their uh, national collection standards in your bankruptcy work uh, today. The market continues to expand and each year there's another million people added to the collection division of the IRS. So will this work in my part of the country? So people who need assistance with the IRS come from all walks of life, from doctors, to truck drivers. They live in big metropolitan and rural areas. And as I mentioned, there are 14 million people from Maine to Hawaii who owe billions to the IRS who are in desperate need of your help right now. And businesses, businesses, and that's where the really large fees come in. The five to $10,000 fees are for consumers, individuals, businesses that need assistance with payroll taxes. The fees are much higher and they include retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, wholesalers. Think about all the people in the trades, anything related to the real estate industry, like uh, drywallers, plumbers, carpenters, general contractors, electricians, cement guys, pavers. The guys who plow the snow in the winter are also the same guys who cut your lawn in the summer. 
they're all mostly, a lot of them are cash-based businesses that are five times more likely to experience IRS problems than a wage earner. Uh, E-commerce companies, service companies, uh, distributors, cannabis distributors and dispensaries, cryptocurrency traders, and professional practices. I can't tell you how many doctors, chiros, CPAs, attorneys, financial advisors I've represented before the IRS. The one thing they all have in common is that they are in need of your help to get their IRS problems in the rear view mirror. I used to consider, and I still do, that everyone hears these uh, late night uh, TV ads and the radio commercials. You've probably seen them or heard them targeting people who need assistance with IRS and tax collection issues. So national companies don't compete with you as much as create public awareness that practitioners can actually help them with their IRS and state collection uh, tax matters. And many people, most people, would prefer to work with you, their local attorney, than calling some impersonal 800 number 10 states away and they're dealing with a salesperson uh, trying, to get their, trying to get their money. So uh, we use the marketing efforts of, of the larger tax res firms to our advantage. So a question I get asked a lot is, do I need a physical office to meet with clients or can I conduct this as a virtual business? You can conduct it as a virtual or remote business, but here's the really cool thing. Since you're a, an attorney in good standing with your local state bar, and since the IRS is a federal agency, I'm gonna put a myth to bed here, you can represent clients in all 50 states. You are permitted to represent these clients per IRS Circular 230, which governs practice before the IRS. So there's a myth out there that says, if I'm an attorney in California, I can only represent troubled taxpayers in California. That is a myth, that is not true. You can represent clients in all 50 states throughout the country. And I always considered the IRS my marketing partner. When they levied one of my clients, when they, when they filed a notice of federal tax lien against the client, they were doing marketing for me because the client had to call somebody to resolve their problem. And if I was out there doing my marketing, whether that was direct mail or online, I was top of mind. So the IRS is not only filing liens and levies the old fashioned way through revenue officers, I call those boots on the ground, uh, but they're also filing through the ACS means automated collection system, where you have uh, people at the IRS making $16 an hour who have your client's fate in their hand. Think about that for a second. The, the ACS telephone collectors who you're supposed to call sometimes to resolve your client's cases do not know what they're doing. As a matter of fact, I used to teach them their own rules and laws on the phone uh, because they, they're not trained, they don't have the education. But the IRS is also filing these liens automatically by, co uh, by computers, thereby creating more opportunities for the practitioners. I mentioned earlier, the IRS lost 23% of their headcount. So they have to rely more and more on technology. The IRS sent out 200 million notices in 2017. Over 60% of them were incorrect. So consumers, taxpayers need your help figuring this out and resolving their tax problems. Okay, so let's talk about what are the options that a client who has IRS problems are faced with. They're, they can only do one of four things. So every tax resolution client will make one of these four choices when dealing with the IRS. Number one, pay the IRS 100% of what the IRS claims they owe. And we just said that 60% of the notices are incorrect. Number two, ignore the IRS until the IRS decides they've waited long enough for the taxpayer to deal with the problem and now will inflict harm by taking the taxpayer's income and or assets, leaving them very little to live on. When the IRS levies your client's paycheck, the IRS can take up to 90% of the net pay 
leaving your client with dealing with putting or keeping a roof over their head and keeping food on the table. Number three, and this is what a lot of taxpayers do, they set up themselves, they represent themselves, setting up a never ending monthly payment plan where the IRS keeps piling on penalties and interest and interest on top of the penalties. The accrual of all these extra charges often results in the balance due growing every month despite the taxpayer making his or her monthly payments. And number four, reduce the total amount they owe to an affordable number with the help of a tax problem resolution specialist and get on with their life. Which one of these choices do you think most people would make? If they had the money to pay the IRS, they would have done so already. Others will wait until the problem gets so bad that it affects all aspects of their life. Yes, some uninformed people will just set up a monthly installment agreement that continues to add interest and penalties. They seldom do this in their best interest and could use your help to fix the problem. Many agree to payments they simply can't afford, but they're afraid, they don't know what to say to the IRS, they don't wanna say no, they just wanna get it taken care of. So they'll agree to some large monthly amount just to default the installment agreement 30 days into it. But this last group, group number four, where they wanna reduce the amount, that's your most profitable client. These are your bread and butter cases. They need help now, they want help, and the IRS is probably already after them. So they're ready to take action, they're ready to act, and they will pay you in advance to deal with the IRS. Okay, but you may be saying, but Mike, I've never done this type of work before. So a lot of practitioners get into this type of work, are worried about messing up or making a mistake because the work is unfamiliar to them. Okay, number one is someone who comes to you owing $75,000 has four years of returns that need to be filed, is being levied by their employer. There's not a lot you could do to mess them up. The only thing you can do is improve their situation. They're already messed up. There's no mistake I can think of that you can make that's gonna make this situation worse. The way I learned to represent clients before the IRS was this way. I took on as many cases as I could handle and I figured it out. I learned how to do a lot of this work on my own. There weren't a lot of resources available when I started. Today, there are tons of resources available to do the work. Don't get bogged down in the paralysis of analysis. There's no substitution for getting in the trenches and representing as many clients as you can. That's the most efficient way to learn this. So there's five main categories of resolution, they all follow a three-step workflow process. And I'm talking about collection cases now. I'm not talking about exam or audit-related issues. I'm talking about people who owe but can't pay. And as when I started back 20 years ago, I had zero experience and no clients. I was fired from a corporate job and decided I wanted to help people with IRS problems. I wanted to fight the good fight. I wanted to fight the David versus Goliath fight. And when I started, I had zero experience and no clients. Yet, I was able to have 168 month over month increases in my monthly deposits in my bank statement that culminated in doing $23 million doing IRS resolution solely IRS resolution uh, in my firm. I didn't have a traditional or conventional CPA practice. I didn't do that. That, that was a commodity to me. Uh, this was a very specialized sub niche area that I got into and that I, I teach others how to get into now. So let's talk about the five major case options you're going to come up against with people that have IRS problems. The first one, and this is the one that you hear pennies on the dollar, of, you know, settle for a fraction of what's owed. This is the hook. This is the hook. Only 35% of people actually qualify for the offer and compromise. So an offer and compromise is a formal legal binding agreement between the taxpayer and the IRS that settles the taxpayer's tax liabilities for less than the full amount owed, many times for a fraction of what's owed. This is codified in Internal Revenue Section 7122. <clears throat> the rest of the options, two, three, four, and five are not codified 
are not law. Offering compromise, Code Section 7122, is the only one that's codified. An installment agreement is an agreement between the taxpayer and the IRS that fully pays the liability over time, generally 72 to 84 months. And you can find that in Internal Revenue Manual Section 5.8 Financial Analysis. A partial pay installment agreement or a PPIA is an agreement between the taxpayer and the IRS that partially pays back the liability owed. It's determined by what the taxpayer can afford over the remaining life of the collection statute of expiration date, or the CSED, which is generally 10 years. The IRS cannot collect on a debt that's 10 years older from the date of assessment. And that's an internal revenue manual, also section 5.8. Penalty abatement. The IRS agrees to remove or reduce penalties assessed against the taxpayer based on nine reasonable cause criteria. That can be found in Internal Revenue Manual Section 20. Currently not collectible is like a financial hardship situation. The taxpayer must demonstrate financial hardship and is not required to make any monthly payments toward the debt. However, penalties and interest continue to accrue and it does not toll the 10 year collection statute that continues to run. This is also found in Internal Revenue Manual section 5.8. I used CNC for elderly couples on fixed incomes and as a stepping stone to an offering compromise or an installment agreement or PPIA. I used it very strategically. That's currently not collectible. So those are the five major IRS collection options at your disposal. So let's look at a case study right now. And this is the rule, not the exception. This is your bread and butter tax resolution cases. A taxpayers, husband and wife have four years unfiled returns. The husband's being levied by his employer. They're projected to owe around 70,000, including penalties and interest. And you've determined that they are good offering compromise candidates. They have about 3,000 of net equity and assets, and per the 433A, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, they have $250 a month in disposable income when you take their income and compare them to the national standards for expenses. Take a little water here. So here's the three-step process. Every collection case is broken into three phases. Transcript discovery or analysis, compliance, and resolution. So in the transcript discovery or analysis phase, we determine where the client is in the collection process. And we also look at the C sets because there's a lot of strategy that goes on in this phase. Because, you know, think about it. If you're lost and you ask somebody for directions, what's the first question they ask you is, where are you? The transcript analysis determines where the client is. So that's the first phase. The second phase is you got to get them in compliance. You got to prepare all the unfiled returns. You got to get them into legal filing compliance. The IRS is not going to deal with you on resolution until your client is in full compliance with their tax filings. And then three, that's where we do the levy release. We prepare and submit the 433A. We prepare and submit the offer and compromise and we negotiate with the IRS offer examiner or, we, or at, the, at the appellate level, which is administrative. None of this is, is legal. We're all administrative, even at appeal. The appellate level at the IRS is considered an administrative arm of the IRS. We're not going to tax court at this point. Okay. Uh, so, at the, so those are the three areas of, uh, of every phase. Now, let me, before I go to that slide, let me talk about the 433A OIC. The 433A or the 433A OIC is the meat and potatoes of every collection case. It's a six page snapshot of your client's current financial condition. Think of it like a P&L of your client at any given point in time, at the current point in time. Okay, you have to substantiate the numbers you put on the 433A, like copies of bank statements, pay stubs, 
copies of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the mortgage payoff, copy of car loans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, doing tax problem resolution is an exercise in cash flow, inflows and outflows. I'm gonna repeat that. Doing tax resolution has nothing to do with tax or accounting. It has to do what's coming into the bank every month and what's leaving the bank every month. And then you compare that to the national standards that the IRS allows for healthcare, for transportation, for housing and utilities, for food and miscellaneous. So here's the end result of this client. The IRS will accept an offer for $6,000 on this client. How do they come up with the $6,000? The $3,000 of net equity and assets, and you take the $250 a month, multiply that by 12, which is the multiplier in a cash offer, that's another 3,000. So in this particular case, the IRS will accept $6,000 on a $70,000 liability. Your client gets their life back, they refer others to you, and you have, if you want it, built-in tax prep and other advisory services for life. You as their practitioner, or the tax resolution firm, get $9,100 in fees. I'm gonna show you this on the next slide. Now the case is gonna be in your office for 12 to 14 months. You're gonna have this case hanging around for 12 to 14 months, not because you're lazy or not doing what you, you should be doing, but you can't control the IRS's workload, okay? Now, but you're only gonna touch the case about 20 hours. 20 man labor hours will be involved in this case. So your effective hourly rate is going to be about $455 an hour. Now, when you have a little experience under your belt and you have case management software, uh, for example, like Pitbull tax software or tax help software for the transcripts, transcript analysis tool, you'll be able to shave at least five hours off every collection case. So now your hourly rate is more like $600 an hour. So for you, it creates wealth and you're able to predict with precision what your future cash flow and profitability is going to be based on this next slide. So I've developed a fee schedule, a, su a suggested fee schedule. This is just a snapshot of my fee schedule. So for phase one, you get $1,500 to do the IRS transcript investigation and evaluate the alternatives available to your client to resolve, to resolve their case. You get at least $400 per return for the compliance work. Now, even if you outsource it, and here's how I did my outsourcing. I found a number of enrolled agents and CPAs around town who were hungry, um, even during tax season, and, and hungrier in the off season. So I would, I would contract with the client, and in my retainer agreement, my engagement letter, I was allowed to engage third parties when I needed to. So I would pay the enrolled agent or the CPA one third of my fee for tax prep. So if I charged the client $400 to do the return, I paid the other professional $133. I didn't care if it took him five minutes to prepare the return or 15 hours to prepare the return. He got paid one third of my fee upon production, upon completion of that tax return. So that was $1,600. I charged $1,000 to get the levy released. And then for an offer and compromise at between fifty dollars to $70,000, I charged $5,000, which included all the prep work for the 433A OIC, uh, also the 656, which is the offer and compromise form, which is a four page easy peasy form, and also to negotiate the offer. So all in, all in, and this is the rule, not the, ex the exception. This was a $9,100 case. My average case value, over 14,000 clients and 16 years was $8,700 per client. I'm going to repeat that. My average case value was $8,700 per client over a 14, over a 16 year period. And that was over 14,000 clients, 14,000 cases. So you guys seeing this, I'm, I'm hoping this is painting 
uh, a cool picture for you because it's a really cool niche uh, to get into. Okay, um, so how do you collect that fee in advance, right? Because think about it, if someone coming to you owing $75,000 and the most brutal collection agency on the planet couldn't collect from your client, how are you gonna collect after you resolve their case and send them an invoice? It's not happening, okay? So here's how you do it. So I broke, and if you're not experienced, I suggest you break each case into two engagements, right? There's three phases of work, transcript, discovery, compliance, and then resolution. And then there are two phases on doing the engagement. Once you're experienced, it's one phase. You just do one engagement agreement. But if you're not experienced, you can break it out this way. So you do engagement agreement number one, get retained, get $1,500 on a credit card or a check to do the transcript investigation and evaluation to find out exactly where the client is and what you need to do to resolve the case. And then engagement agreement number two went like this. That's where the levy release went on, the four years of tax prep and the offering compromise. I always got a 30% deposit on engagement agreement number two or nearly $2,300. And here's something I want you to listen to very carefully and write it down. Here's how I got paid on the balance, which was uh, $5,320 in this particular example. I got six monthly payments or $886.67 on an authorized credit card authorization or an ACH debit authorization. Okay, I did not deposit the 2280. I did not charge the credit card 2280 until I had a signed authorized signature to take money out of their bank account once a month or to charge their credit card once a month. Very, very important. Now you may be saying, Mike, what if your client says they can't afford 886.67 for six months? Okay, remember what I said earlier that this case is going to be in your office, in your inventory for 12 to 14 months. So I was flexible here. I would go out eight months if I needed to, or 10 months at most. I would never go out more than 10 months. But since I knew I, this case was going to be in my inventory, and since I knew that the taxpayer couldn't handle 886 a month, but they could handle, say, 700 or 600 a month. I would go out longer on the payment terms. So this is how you get paid 100% in advance before the case settles, okay? Okay, so uh, question is, is if you had a complete business system that generated leads, turned them into appointments, got them to show up all while getting you paid in advance the fees you deserve, I mean, wouldn't you want to have something like that? Wouldn't you have the practice and lifestyle you always wanted when you first started out? So what I would suggest is, and we'll take questions. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I, I can't see them, Travis, so we'll go over your questions here in a minute, is to set up a strategy call with me. There's the link. Um, Go.oncehub forward slash Michael Roz. Or I also have a free two-hour uh, training webinar uh, 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 detailing what my program is all about, how it works, and everything else. That's rawstrategies.com forward slash live dash training. So you can get all, the, uh, all your questions answered there as well. So Travis, do you have any questions for us? We did not have any questions. I was really surprised. So uh, there's one or two ways to look at it. You are very thorough, which you were, because I was listening in on the whole thing. So it was very informative. Um, or you answered all their questions, or they have uh, I've, uh, just waited till the end here. So if anyone has any questions, I would encourage you to go ahead and pop them in a QA and a or, or put them in the chat. We'd be happy to answer them. We have a few minutes left. So I know Michael would appreciate any questions that you have and or you can obviously use the links that uh, Michael's provided you to connect with him and I know he has some other contact information he's going to share with you so yep. um, I still don't have any questions but so you know apparently you were very thorough and or the information is a uh, bit thorough so it, it is a little bit surprising to me because I thought this was a pretty interesting topic yep 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 uh, does anyone on the call um would anyone on the call be interested 
in, in adding tax resolution to their practice or not interested at all. I'm just wondering if there's any interest. Hmm. Strange, I mean, no, no feedback, so okay. hopefully. Uh, what we're gonna do obviously is we're gonna post this on, oh, we actually got one person that just raised their hand, so that's okay. good. Uh, so great webinar, I'll get into this. Uh, someone just responded, so we have some, some interest. So I think there's, um, you know, I think there'll probably be more interest after we post it on the site and then send it out to the uh, member list as well, okay. so. What's their question? The question, I uh, just said great webinar, I'll look into this. That oh, was, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, I got it. I am interested in learning more from Gordon Rowe. Um, okay. So that's good. So Gordon will uh, make sure that Michael connects with you and reaches out and uh, connects with you on a more uh, detailed level and, and provides you with more information. So again, I think uh, ideally these people have your contact information and or we will send them out contact information to the entire list with the recorded webinar. So we will get this in the hands of more people than we did today. All right, great. Yeah, yeah, because I left some time. Uh, obviously, I, I got through faster than I anticipated. I want to leave time for Q&A. But yeah, absolutely, uh, Travis, thanks so much for affording me the opportunity to speak to your, your tribe. And, uh, you know, you, they, anyone, if they want, they can call the office, too. Uh, the phone number is there. The best way to schedule a call with me, though, is to go to that calendar. Uh, the first link on that slide is to schedule uh, a call. You can check out the website. There it is, rawstrategies.com. Our uh, physical office address is 888, uh, phone number is 888-670-0303. If anyone wants to speak to Becky or Sue. Um, yeah, that's... Mike, and, and Gordon, uh, I mean, Mike, we have Gordon, a question from Gordon. He was, says, can Michael tell me how much a strategy session will cost? The strategy session is free. So there you go, you can't beat that. Uh, that is uh, the best price going today. Yep. Um, so again, the strategy session is free. So again, I encourage you to reach out folks. This is a great opportunity to add more revenue to your practice. It's a very simple way to do it. It seems like a no brainer to me when you look into this, just as, as Michael and I were talking about, it's adding a few questions to your intake process to qualify these folks. Um, you know, there's always, you know, we're always looking for opportunities to right. generate revenue. I mean, one way to test it is all you, all you would have to do is, yeah, like, you know, add three or four intake questions to your current intake form for people who are calling your office for wh whatever they're calling your office for. Cause you may find, especially bankruptcy attorneys, you, you will find that uh, most bankruptcy cases are also uh, could be tax resolution cases, but even PI cases, disability cases, um, you, you never know just by asking some questions, you may find that these cases will be falling into your lap. Yeah. And I think that you brought up a, a point earlier that was really understated was the cryptocurrency market today. A lot of these folks have no idea what they're, what they've gotten themselves into. Yeah. So just uh, so we have a couple minutes. So Travis, I think you know that Coinbase was sued by the IRS in a John Doe uh, subpoena about a year and a half ago. So Coinbase had to turn over 15,000 names to the IRS. Those 15,000 people are getting notices now. Now what's interesting is, those 15,000 names were from 2013 and 2014. There are another 15 million people in 15, 16, 17, and 18 that had cryptocurrency transactions that we know are not reporting those gains on their returns. And just think about where, what crypto did in 17 and 18. Um, so the IRS is in the process now of trying to obtain those other 15,000 US taxpayers that had crypto. And that's why crypto is, is going to explode for resolution. Yeah, and I, it's again, it's a, a, an under, under marketed area and it's something that people could take advantage of and certainly something we're encouraging our clients from a marketing perspective to take advantage of. But it's uh, again, this is a great way to do it. This is a great strategy. And well, Michael, I don't have any more questions. Okay. But, um, again, we're gonna, we'll send this out to the entire list and that way we'll get it in front of more folks. Uh, and I know that we'll get a lot more interest that way, but I really appreciate your time. That was a great session and it was very informative and we appreciate you having taking the time to, to spend with us today. My pleasure, Travis. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. 
and we look, and we appreciate the folks that joined us today. So again, we'll send this out to the list. So if anybody missed anything or parts of the webinar, they can watch it again. And again, reach out to Michael. His contact information will be in the email. And we look forward to having you on the webinar again soon, Michael. Take care. Thank you, Travis. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.